So we get a lot of questions from clients around qualified opportunity zones and, and how that potentially could work for them. Um, Drew, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, tackle this topic for, for those watching around how qualified opp opportunity zones work and how uh, they may be beneficial for someone watching this video. Yeah, sure. So qualified opportunity zones was part of the, uh, the Jobs Act of 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, and really the focus there was to try to incentivize people to, uh, they maybe have a highly appreciated property and want to take advantage of a 1031 exchange into a distressed area. So kind of the definition there of a qualified opportunity zone is they're distressed areas, distressed property zones in each state, uh, which by the way, you can find a list of those areas on the IRS's website, but really it was incentivized to bring developers, bring economic relief and uh, reinvigorate those areas basically um, in helping taxpayers defer some capital gains through which most people are familiar with the 1031 exchange where we can defer capital gains. The, the OZ zone adds another potential piece to it here where we can um, then grow that over a 10 year period and potentially get rid of those capital gains as well. So that's really where it focused uh, in much more in nuanced areas than the traditional 1031 exchange. Uh, what's unique about these is they're not always in areas that you would think uh, they used 2010 census data to, uh, with the governors of each state when they went into those areas. Uh, so some, some areas you might not think would be an OZ zone uh, are. One, of, one that we see a lot is around college campuses. So places like the University of Southern California, a very, very high-end school, that's an OZ zone because it's, again, income level. There's certain poverty uh, income calculations that went into that. You have a bunch of college kids who probably don't earn a, a very big living, um, and those were classified. So you're seeing a lot of folks that did uh, multifamily housing, in essence, which are college campus uh, housing, good tenants. There's always a you know, good turnover of, of students coming in, so people are always going to rent them. So there's some unique things that uh, people used in OZ zones, uh, but it also allowed for properties to transfer hands. And most people stay in a property because it's a highly appreciated asset. They don't want to have to pay the capital gain. Uh, so this allowed for transfer of property, new economic development. Um, and, and so it was a, a really good thing to try to re restore those areas. So Dave, I, just out of curiosity, have you, have you seen or heard of any examples of people doing that? Yeah, uh, great, great question. Uh, we have, in fact, <clears throat> You know, we had one uh, with a client who had uh, a really uh, highly appreciated stock. He had an exit from his company, a privately held company. And <clears throat> there's certain rules and provisions that you have to have with these. Uh, but he had about a $10 million gain uh, that would have been taxed at a long-term capital gains rate, 23.8% to be specific, um, that uh, he identified a property within 180 days uh, and uh, put part of that gain into a qualified opportunity zone. What that allowed him to do was A, not pay capital gains tax. And that's a huge distinction there. On a $10 million capital gain at 23.8%, you can do the math, that's $2.38 million that um, he did not have to pay in capital gains tax. Now he ended up, um, not not taking full advantage of that. But in this example, if he put all $10 million into the qualified opportunity zone, his purchasing power just went up by 23.8% because if he would have bought it post that transaction, he would have had $2.38 million less because of capital gains tax. So he was able to buy uh, more, um, he was able to have more purchasing power essentially because he was not having to pay that tax. Now, by uh, investing in that property, as long as he held it for a certain period of time, uh, there's a five-year and a 10-year uh, uh, threshold. And this is where getting you know, the right experts uh, on your team that, that specialize in qualified opportunity zones would be paramount. But if you held the property for 10 years, that capital gain is now capital gains tax-free on that initial tranche. And so there's a tremendous amount of opportunity Drew had mentioned uh, this earlier that the 2010 census 
uh, which is where the uh, 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 qualified opportunity zones were based off of, basically impoverished neighborhoods. One of the kind of interesting things um, is student housing. Uh, remember, students don't make a lot of money. Uh, at least I didn't when I was in college. Um, and so uh, those are under the federal poverty level and those zip codes um, were a lot of them were classified as opportunity zones. So we had a lot of our clients that were investing in these buying multifamily, you know, really high end apartment communities that are, you know, less than a mile from uh, college campus qualify for this. And those, of course, um, there's risk with everything, but you know, student housing, because of the enrollment and a lot of these universities are not building uh, dorms, a lot of them may be out of space. A lot of these students are moving off campus. And so there, there tends to be a high rate of uh, occupancy there. And one might consider that a lower risk real estate investment. So there's a, uh, no pun intended, Drew, but there's a, there's a lot of opportunity uh, around uh, the investment area here uh, for, for those that are interested in this. Yeah, I agree. I, it, yeah, it's a great example. That's a great example of, of one. And uh, if, if there was a point that uh, you have a transaction that you're working through, or it, maybe this jogs uh, something that you thought of selling a piece of property and you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, we, we'd love to chat with you about it. Reach out to us on social media, go to our website. Uh, you can certainly schedule some time with uh, Dave or myself. Uh, we can talk through that and just, it might fit your situation. Um, we always like to say there's, there's tons of rocks out there. Let's flip it over, see what's under it. Uh, we may or may not use it. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in that, we'd love to chat with you uh, and we, we'll, we'll connect soon.